killed or trapped. Cumberland Island, Georgia is known for its pristine wilderness and feral horses, but are these horses being neglected? So a lawsuit has been filed on behalf of the horses. Jessica Clark is on your side, taking us to the island and speaking with a woman who has lived there on the island for 50 years. Cumberland Island, Georgia. The only way to get there is by boat or private plane. People visit this national park every day to see the natural vistas and the horses and that roam all over the island, free as birds. It's beautiful to have like horses in the beach and the ruins. Yeah. It's gorgeous. But there's something most visitors don't see right in front of them. Look at that one. Carol Rutteschel says the horses are hungry. I felt sorry for them. There's not that much to eat. Rutteschel knows Cumberland and its feral horses. She's lived on the island for 50 years. Described as the wildest woman in America, Rutteschel so is a naturalist. She surveys the island's wildlife weekly. She explained that seeing a horse's ribs does not mean it's malnourished, but... You see her hip bones sticking out. When the hip bones are sticking out, Rutgershell says that's a sign of not having enough to eat. They're not woodland animals at all. They're for the open plains. And there are only a couple open areas on Cumberland. So the horses go into the woods and into the marshes as well, looking for food. And I've seen them sink in mud so badly they couldn't get out until I'd come in and kill them. I mean, it's just that kind of simple thing that you don't think about. She's seen horses die with their young, hungry babies or get stuck between trees. Rugdeshell says the island is bad for the horses and the horses are bad for the island, such as when the horses go out into the marsh. It's his feet, his weight. It tears up the whole substrate. It kills everything living in it. She says horses also hurt endangered sea turtle hatchlings. They would just course stomp on the babies. They wouldn't know. It wouldn't be the horse's fault. Not all the horses look bad. The young female's gonna look good, and, and, and the stallions look good. But she says the mares are often always pregnant, which amps up their need and search for food. The horses are not native to Cumberland Island. Over the years, people have brought them here. The last folks to do that in the 1880s, the Carnegies. But by the time the National Park Service got here in 1972, the horses were feral. Rugdeshell and others are suing the National Park Service and other federal and state agencies over these very issues. The lawsuit argues the government agencies have failed to follow some of their own rules and regulations that protect the island and its more than 100 horses. Court documents state the island's horse's life expectancy is a third of that of a domestic horse. The Georgia Equine Rescue League is one of the plaintiffs. Patty Livingston leads the organization. She says other barrier islands in the U.S. with feral horses have programs in place to care for horses. They're feeding them. They're vetting them. The National Park Service's website states Cumberland has the only herd of feral horses on the Atlantic coast that is not managed. No food, water, veterinary care, or population control. The National Park Service acknowledges the horses have adversely impacted wildlife and vegetation. And the National Park Service and other defendants in the lawsuit tell First Coast News they do not comment on pending litigation. The Park Service further added the National Park Service and the Cumberland Island National Seashore staff are committed to managing the park's natural and cultural resources consistent with our authorities. I feel like it's a cool part of the attraction. No doubt. The horses are a draw for visitors. Yeah, shark teeth and horses, because that's the two reasons we came. Rock to Shell says many people think that. We think because they're free, they're enjoying a wonderful, happy existence. But she adds that often visitors who know about horses see beyond the horse's mystique. You know, they're, they're a product of their environment. So what do these women think is the best thing for the horses here? To figure 
a humane way to get them off this island. What we are demanding is that they be fed immediately. The horses of Cumberland Island, a living part of the island's past life, when these animals were livestock and maintained, but they're on their own now. Would as many people visit Cumberland without the horses there? Many people want to keep them on the island. We've got to realize we've taken a, a species that isn't fit, is so ill fit for here, and put them here, and now we want to keep them, as I said, just for our viewing pleasure, which doesn't seem right. So as tourists, many who came to see the horses depart from the island, Ruckdeshell remains, and the horses stay too, free to roam, but unable to leave. Jessica Clark, First Coast News, on your side.